Uh, you were mentioning that you wanted to do some level progression stuff, which is good. Continuing yeah. on the theme. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I want to figure out. You know, maybe, maybe the question is like, what what is the goal here? Because if it's kill all enemies, I think that's a little boring right now. But it could be. What is what is the goal of Bolo? Is it to like take over every uh, pillbox? Um, it could be. It it might be take over every pillbox. Uh, there might be a timer element if it's multiplayer, and just mm-hmm. to see who collects the most kills. Mm-hmm. Um, for our game, it's probably kill all the towers, right? At, at this okay. point, we don't really have enough. We don't have enough other things going on for that to be. You know, like we don't have other entities. Like we could make them. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of wondering if, like, if we need to think about some other entities to make the level progression fun. Though uh-huh. you know what, it'd be interesting to to make this the. Gosh, it, it is hard to kill all the towers and not die. So sure. Yeah. Oh my god. This. All right. This game is actually hard. <laughs> um, it is hard. Uh, we actually even may want to make a level that's easier to beat, <laughs> or yeah. tri- trivially easy to beat. The other, the other, the other um, completion thing we could do is, you know, make it so that you have to drive to a certain point in the level, and we'd have to design a level where that's challenging. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's the. This at least takes like I'm almost out of health. One one more hit gets me. So <laughs> I do like that I had to bust through a wall to make this work, though. Yeah. Ooh. Man, we put some good stuff together in this whole thing. I can't believe all this works. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just we're just that's the sentiment of a professional programmer, right? Is like I can't believe that anything works. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> you know, I've I've seen some other I've seen other games as code. And I've seen ours, and ours is like, not, not bad. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm actually like, I feel like, I feel like two real programmers wrote this thing, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, we got about it's two real programmers writing something that they got forty percent of the way through factoring. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but look, look at all, look at all these classes. Like, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens when we start adding like, game, uh, more gameplay, and if it just turns into a tangled rat's nest of behaviors. Yeah, oh, it'll like that. Yeah, it'll, it'll it it yeah, it'll get challenging uh, once we have lots of variation in entity behavior and exactly how we want to handle that given the fact that I almost dismantled our entire entity class. We'll see. Open question. I like I like the way it feels right now though. Yeah, so. it does feel good. Yeah. I, I mean, last stream I, I felt like justified a little bit like how easy it was to throw in like a health bar, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, no, and the then, sy- and systems then work away. really well. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, no, you were, you were wholly right on that. So I, I'm into it now. I, I'm a convert. Okay. So what, so let's see. So if I restart, well, I love that I can reload without, uh, refreshing the whole page. So maybe, uh, maybe there's a couple things like, is this map too big? Is the tank too slow. This would take a long time to beach. We so we switch to like tiny map. Yeah, we could do tiny map. Tiny map seems a little easier. Ooh, I think I saw. I thought I saw it shoot through the wall. Maybe not. Um, it's possible. It, oh yeah, yeah it did. It kind of. It yeah. It's because I'm visible. I am yeah. surprised that you are the closest one by line of sight, right? Well, I think what's happening is the turrets over here, I'm faster than the turn speed. Oh, oh that is, oh, you know what? You're right. We've, we've already yeah. talked about this as being an issue, right? Like if you're- Yeah, we, we kind of knew that was happening. Yeah. Um, We're just fine. That's, I'm fine with that. It's okay. Yeah, and we just want to make, 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 make it po- not possible to spawn a bullet inside of another wall, right? Like that's, that's the problem. Yeah, it'd be, I, I think actually it's the spawn point for the gun is pretty far out too. I can I can even see it shooting like a whole tile out. So yeah. I'm I'm fine with that. Um, then yeah, so so we're saying that like if I manage to defeat this little guy, 
then the game should say you didn't die and take me to the next level. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that. We, we've got that going on at least. Let's let's pull that in there and see. Once we can beat a level, we can make beating levels more interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so our game knows. Our game knows about all our maps. Yep. Uh, wait, that's not it. It's assets. Our main knows about all our maps. Uh, and all the maps are dropped in here as like a string to raw map interface. Mm-hmm. Uh, so would it be would it be worth sort of introducing a progression here? It'd be like uh order as a string yeah the other thing we could do is define the progression somewhere else let the assets mm. index just be a raw database of assets and then have like a game progression okay class somewhere else or put it into game or something like that and you can just like stick the keys Okay. Yeah. No. It depends on where we want to define these and where, like, where's the line between the game logic and the level design, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe let's see. Yeah, and it's like maps dot Oops. Ah, man. I feel like these should be in game and not main. So maybe that is something that will bite me first. Okay. Uh, it should be like maps dot collision test maps dot big map. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why it's not auto completing. So like, there's you know, there's something. This is gonna be like TypeScript, just like what is this type? Nah, just that I never use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I it does sure feel like this needs to go into game, doesn't it? There's not really a reason yeah. for the games we built with a map of raw data. Like we're, we're actually going to bring this logic in there. So let's, yeah, let's pull that in. I'll call game progression. Let's pull our maps in. Oh, God, he's not pulling down here. And now let's see. So we construct it with a map. Let's maybe just stop using that for a second. Uh, and then this dot map is game progression dot levels, game progression dot current level. And that sure looks like a thing that could be in our reload, huh? Hmm. What does this dot map get used for other than line 65? Uh, let's see. So uh part of our uh, part of our initialization got it yeah but you know that's that's kind of fine uh what is restart uh where do we if this is reload set state game running ah and then game running does start play which rebuilds it okay uh so I feel like start play maybe needs to be factored into like load map and reset. Yeah. Cause we're gonna like we're gonna like kick it forward and the state we're gonna maintain is the current level. Yeah. Ah, uh, which actually yeah, this is this is good. Uh that means this is probably an array and the game itself holds on to a level. Yeah, that makes full sense. Yeah. This dot current level equals zero. Maybe we'll want to enum this better at some point. Yeah. I can't access this here, can I? Can I initialize the value up here? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I, it's I, I assume. I assume that you can't because. TypeScript doesn't create any extra run ah. code when the class is declared, right? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. 
and then this dot map is oh map dot from raw. Okay, cool. So if we reload, oops, let's see what it's unhappy about. We can take out the map from the game constructor. We can take out the map that we're passing in here. It no longer needs that. So I think everything no longer needs that. Everything mappy is sort of out of here. Okay. And I bet I'll be able to remove that local storage in a second. Though maybe it'll be nice to. Um, if you want to refresh and keep the game on the same level at least. Hey Dom, would it be possible to bump your font size up maybe one or two two touches? Absolutely. How's that? That's pretty good. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Ah, man. I, I wish it had an in-between this and this. Yeah, it's always been a big problem for me. I think it probably goes from like 125 to 150 right away, right? Is it percentage-based? That would make sense. Although I, I will say that the Sublime one is confusing because I think the Command Plus actually changes your font setting, which is not what you want, right? Oh, that that is confusing. Yeah, because you want some notion of like what the home base is, and you lose that if, you, if, if the setting gets modified. Fascinating. Uh, okay, so let's see. Ah, that'll just be this dot map. Can I use this in the constructor? Uh, you can. I mean, you're set. You're signing it. So uh, that's it. Although, oh, okay. What is interesting is like, should the terrain, should the terrain be getting set up here, or should it be getting set up elsewhere? I think it's. I think it's about to move into. Uh, yeah, the start play. Yeah, because it seems. Yeah, it seems very tied to coupled to the the current map, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, can we just. If we bring all of this into start play, mm, yeah. Uh, can we get away with the camera elsewhere? We actually might be able to. Let's let's see if this is safe. I, I think it's okay as long as we initialize the camera to some dumb value. Um, Okay, and then like reinitialize it later, basically. Yeah, I actually ended up doing that for all of the stuff that gets assigned in Star Play. Uh, mm. You notice I didn't make, I didn't end up making them optional at the at the class level because I felt like doing all of the like the non-null assertions and that kind of thing was silly because the only the only variation that that you're really going for is that like did you get to the constructor or not, and I didn't feel like that was worth doing. So I was just assigning kind of like, you'll notice the entity manager is just on line 64 is just a blank one. Um, and the line emitters 64. are, oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, to be to be fair, this is actually a constant. Both of these, right? Uh, min world position and dimensions. I, I guess, uh, yeah, they are. They, they come in from the constructor at least. I think it's just that our maps are all of the same size right now. Currently they are, uh, but I don't think we should expect that to be the case. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this should be, this can just be like two dot create. Yeah, okay. We'll just, yeah. we'll just go empty then. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Get out of my way, little pop-up. And these are just kind of like sentinel placeholder values, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Fascinating. So I think the camera now is uh, too small. It it it's trying to attach to the player, but it, I think it thinks it's zero pixels on the top left. Um, well, we have to recreate the camera when we load the level, right? Yes. Uh, or at least adjust. Uh, it's min world position, world dimensions. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what needs to happen. So whatever Cause, we do, because for... actually viewport is still fine, right? Yeah. Um, and we can set those. Great. They are public. So actually, it was these were on terrain. Yeah. Cool. 
Okay, sweet. Uh, and yeah, it's just this dot camera dot uh, min oh, pause. Sweet. This dot camera dot world dimensions. Excellent. Okay, cool. That's super sick. Mm hmm. Okay, great. So I think we need a new game state, which is uh, level complete. Right. This no longer has a map. It no longer. Uh... I think we need to initialize it with a dummy value. Do we use terrain for anything? We, it looks like we use terrain a lot for rendering. Oh, well, yeah, of course, the terrain is the, it's actually the storage of the background. Yeah, it's, yep. it's the terrain layer. So it, I, I think. So yeah, this, this dot map does need a dummy something. Yeah, I mean, one other abstraction that we could have is like, we could have a level object that encompasses all of these things and you load that into the level, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, or you load that into the game. Like a, almost like a scene or something like that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Can you say more about that? Um, I, I, this, it doesn't have to be right now, but where this will eventually go is that everything that we do will probably be some kind of like top level scene abstraction. Mm. Even the interstitial screens, even like all that stuff. Like you're, you're like the game needs some high level notion of like the thing that it's currently doing and, and what the scene is could just be different levels like in terms of like game like the like the maps or it could be like an entire set of systems that update in that in that particular t at that particular time oh interesting so it, 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 where it would be the latter is is if we encompass something like an interstitial ui scene a cinematic right um, okay all of those types of things um That's very interesting. I'm, gonna, I'm just taking React out of this real quick. Okay. I need it. Yeah, I can. It does feel like there's sort of a lot of. I feel like a lot of this behavior should be in an object somewhere else that we pass yeah. the game to. I, that feels. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I think for now it might be okay. Um, but but yeah. we'll, we'll, feel, we'll start to feel the seams. Yeah. If I just start blocking that off, this will start to make. Yeah, I, I appreciate party. that we're not, we're we're mostly successful and not prematurely abstracting, but you know, mm -hmm. like when I look at sort of like the direct camera property access there, I know for a fact that that eventually is going to become like a, an accessor method. You know, like I look at that, I'm like, we're probably going to end up like calling a function to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it, it's funny just because it's so easy to oversteer from your previous experiences um, when you get into like a really big legacy code base um, you start to deal with the opposite problem where things th things start to seem completely under factored and under abstracted you know and it's like where is this property getting set and it ends up getting set like in an undisciplined way all over the place right mm -hmm. god that sounds yeah yeah but there. yeah the opposite problem is to like and uh, try to anticipate those types of situations and over abstract too early, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I think this starts to be part of our our game loop, right? Uh, I'll complete. And obviously, this is. If you beat the second level, you break the game, but uh, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> or we do it, we, it's current level equals current <laughs> level plus one modulo the size of the level array. Right, so you just go back to the first level. Oh, I kind of like that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Plus one. Because then we've got infinite gameplay. <laughs> The fun so, never stops. So many hours of yeah. gameplay. 
Uh, maps dot size. Yeah, we could do new game plus where the turrets double their health. This, the, <laughs> you know, when it wraps around. You're joking, but that actually sounds maybe a little fun. I do. I like when games get harder on me. Is there no length property on an object style or like a key value style object? In, in? I don't think. I don't think so. No, because oh, no yeah, because like, what is what is the length of an object? You're right. Because we always did. We would always do something like a count, and it would literally like iterate over all the keys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you're doing there. Oh man, JavaScript. It's silly, right? I know. I feel like object key is is where JavaScript sort of like just falls apart for him just like you, you could you could put all this on the object like we know how we want to treat it but no versus stuff yeah. like ruby where you can just like iterate over a hash and get the length of it because like it's a very reasonable operation there's a there's there's sort of like a, a discourse in computer programming where a lot of us consider us not to be quote unquote real engineers Mm -hmm. uh, which I, I sort of understand. It's kind of like, are you building a bridge? That's the classic kind of like uh, analogy. And in a lot of ways, software is super messy. You're like a wizard. You can kind of transform the world to your to do your bidding so easily. And as a result of that, we tend to, instead of measure twice, cut once, we sort of measure zero times, cut a bunch of times, right? <laughs> um, it is an incautious, imprecise craft that oftentimes uh, encourages leaping before looking um and yet at the same time i would say the counter example to that is the entire web browser ecosystem like the amount of unbelievable engineering ability that went into making any of this stuff perform and work mm -hmm. like html the css layout system and javascript which conflates objects and arrays, and they have to be massive. Like it's just incredible that any of this stuff performs, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? It's pretty weird. It really yeah. shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. And and it's be kind of it's gonna it's gonna fulfill the dream of a universal virtual machine that Java was never able to achieve. <sighs> right. And. Uh, and Microsoft was never able to really achieve, except in its own wall garden. Um, but Isn't that weird? They all wanted to make this common runtime, .NET or Java or whatever, and it, what it is is it's WebAssembly. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Wait, yeah, and it's strange that it's WebAssembly, also that like everything is running JavaScript inside like compiled binaries now. Like, I stick it, I stick it on my phone and my desktop. And that's not WebAssembly, right? That's like actually taking just the entirely opposite direction of being like, well, this browser runtime is good enough, so let's not. Did, let's like do Apple, it just in time. Did Apple change their policy on like loading JavaScript every time the, the app boots? I thought at one point you weren't allowed to do that. So the way React Native works is that you're not. You're you're running JavaScript. You're you're running a JavaScript environment, but you since you bundle it into the application, you're not like sourcing it from an external. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's part of your binary so they can vet it and say like, yeah, that's the app, even though you can update it later. No. And then the other trick is that you're using their interpreter, which is the only interpreter you're allowed to use on the system. So like, that's the, that's the rub, but it's uh, silly. I wonder how they prevent you from, I guess maybe you can't eval. There's no like evaluation in uh, i think you might be able to <laughs> there's you, there's an eval call in in in, in that's exposed I, to you because it to be honest i haven't tried but can yeah. you run raw javascript i, I mean, mean I, don't see, I don't see why not I, I guess you could maybe maybe what they're trying to do is not compl they're trying to make it bureaucratically difficult but they're not going to like prevent you from doing it physically right because you could you could obfuscate a web request that fetches code and then mm -hmm. load that as your next React Native component, right? You could right. obfuscate it by like splitting up the URL into individual elements in an array, or, or, or you know, you could do all 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 the manner of like sneaky underhanded stuff, right? 
Yeah, and, and, and you do it all out in the open anyway. Like, I think they just accepted that once we let you run that code, we can't stop you. Yeah. 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 Um, well, it, but the thing is, if you can't eval, then they've walled that off. But I'm not sure if it's nece- it might there are some there might be some libraries where eval is necessary, right? I, I don't know. Yeah, but. I guess I don't. I think they. I don't think that React Native is like constrained JavaScript, which is mm-hmm. the weird part. Yeah. It just gets like web browser context and that's it. Yeah. Oh, it's such a such a strange nonsense system. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So I made it I made an empty map. This is just our whatever. Oh. Right, be zero. Nice. I think zero zero will work as well. Yeah. It just gives us an init. Um what let's see. So now to win, we need to like go in and be like, where we have to find every turret, every bad guy, uh, and like count that they're dead, basically. Yeah. Uh, should we be uh, potentially? This feels like a system. It does feel like a system. I, I think we also might need to start tagging. After at long last, mm. I think we might have to start tagging. Okay. Or we had, we had a tur- we had, we had a bad guy component to the entity, which we <laughs> haven't done so. F- like either we add a new flag. We actually do have flags. Like if you go to the entity class, there are some flags on there, and so hmm, true. arguably we could just mark it as an enemy and then factor that out to a tagging system later on. Okay. Uh, I think yeah. If if we're saying that booleans are essentially yeah, I guess just that, right? That's yeah. that seems fair. Uh, this dot enemy equals false, and then yeah. So then every turret is when going you build to it. yeah, yeah. Uh, the make turret is going to say uh, e dot enemy. That's true. Mm-hmm. I I do like the idea of tagging, but this this is a pretty easy filter, so it's fine for now. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, is there what would you call the system? Like, this system is like the winner, the scorekeeper. Uh, yeah, the level level progress system. Okay. Or the level oh, fin- oh. level finish system, level completion system. Level completion. Yeah, that that actually yeah. is very very highly scoped. Um, to yeah. Just- finishing the level as opposed to doing intermediate goals or whatever, right? Yeah, I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Systems.level completion. Needs to export an update that takes the game. Great. Give me the game. Give me the game. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then let's see, so that's unused and Let's see, so g dot entities dot, okay. Um, so let's see, entities dot entities dot each. If you're into fancy lodash stuff, we could do a lodash dot any or dot exists or something like that. Oh man, I, I am into fancy lodash stuff. Is that what it is? Uh, Generally, they're, these sort of co- sort of container iterators usually have any or exists or not exists. You know, Ruby has that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Uh, collection has. Let's see. I'm not actually seeing it. Includes some. I think it's some. Some. Yeah. Does it have an opposite? Does it have a none? Um, yes. I think so. Huh. I don't see a none. I think it's just dot, it's dot sum. So if not yeah. low dash sum of the collection and then the function you pass in, the predicate you would pass in is like um, dot enemy equals, or just dot enemy, right? It's a boolean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, level complete equals some entities, I like that a lot. 
Yeah, I'm I'm strongly in favor of dropping loot ash everywhere if we want to. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it's a great system. Um, e dot enemy and e dot uh, damageable. What's our? Uh, I actually think that um, because our dam like our system will remove the end remove the entities from the loop when they're fully dead, you can just do eat out enemy and that's that that'll be sufficient. Oh, because they're just not in there. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then you could even get rid of the curly braces and just make it like a, a minimalist yeah. closure. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um so little complete is yeah, right, you were saying not some. Okay. Yeah. So if little complete G dot set state um game state dot oh complete yeah i like systems this was a really good choice yeah and, and again all, all it really was was uh just moving code that we would have slapped in here and then yeah moving yeah. code that we would have slapped in here to some some other place it just, it feels, it's, I found it such a nice, understandable way to deal with this. Yeah. So, so I, I do think, though, we probably will want to contain that in a, you were only uh, going to want that to run if it's, if it's like the, like the, like the running. Right. And yep. running that now suddenly seems to me like not a great name for a state, but we can, we can have that argu argument later, <laughs> I think. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair, because I mean, it's more like is is plain. Or, okay. yeah, I don't even know what the word for it is, because like mm -hmm. <laughs> any, any word, unless we come up with a word for specifically the actual gameplay as opposed to like interstitials and that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I knock this guy out, wow, this is not easy. <laughs> we need an invincibility cheat code. Oh, uh, yeah, we do, don't we? Hey! Hey, whoa, it worked. Okay. Uh, that's really cool. Do we need a flawless victory uh, <laughs> billboard before, before you continue? Oh, but that was absolutely not a flawless victory. Yeah. Wait, so how did um, level complete go to the go to the running state again? Ah, let's bring up the board. Uh, so let's see, so level complete, we're in the callback, we're in this really lovely um, map callback. Has, how does this work again? Uh, this, next this day- is your option, yeah. Open option, yeah. Uh, all right, because we only set next we set next state with set state. Ah, that, yeah. that was really well awesome. So, so the weird thing is, is like I, I bet if you looked at the current state inside the game right now, mm -hmm. it would be, and we're still in a level complete state. I think we want to be able to get back to the running state somehow. Oh, interesting. Um, if we're in level complete state, yes, nothing can shoot at me. Yep. Clever. Do we want um, any kind of interstitial? Do we want anything that uh, sits yeah, in between I, here and you have to hit a key to continue or something like that? Because that's all our It's pretty jarring, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And I think hit a key is pretty good for that, huh? Yeah. Um, OK, cool. That's nice, because that sort of brings us into this. We've actually got a keyboard handler here where it's like, if if Hang on a second, Tom. I think if you get rid of the yeah. terrain, the game will break. Because the oh. terrain actually stores the tile sets. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Why did I do that? Uh, it was just uh, it's not. It's not yeah. initialized. We need to initialize it to some empty terrain object. Yeah. Oh. Oh, is it null? In map empty. Let's let's initialize that to some blank. Yep. Thing. Yeah. We'll uh, this, it totally uh, is. It's, I think it's too blank. Uh, is it? I, I, I don't know. I, what was it complaining about before? Uh, 
is missing the f following tile origin. Oh, it's just not the right class. Um, but isn't... Well, let's go to start play, because that, that'll initialize terrain correctly. Ah, fair. New terrain layer. Uh, so really, that should be renamed gotcha. to be terrain layer. I think that's probably the better. Yep. Can I rename and scoop? Yes. Uh, great. And then, yeah, totally. This is terrain. And then tile origin is vec2.create. And yeah. tile dimensions. Oops. Yeah. Vec2.create. Yeah. Cool. I will figure out something for this. I don't love the kind of creation. This is a classic sort of like constructor versus initialization of objects confusion mm -hmm. that there's there's lots of different ways around this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The this is feeling awkward. Yeah. I agree. Okay, 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 everything that's still everywhere. Great. Great, okay. Um, then yeah, I, let's see. So if you're in level complete, we're gonna update the current level and we're not gonna change the state yet. We're not gonna start play. We're going to add an upkey handler for this. Oh no, wait, um, no, upkey handler for game level complete. Yeah. Let's see, what is the upkeep for space? We've got that somewhere, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably in the player. We could probably do any any key press. You could do, if like the, mm. uh, the upkeep is the, the length of it is non-zero or something like that. That's legit, yeah. Of course, if you're still shooting, uh, then you'll you'll accidentally <laughs> you'll accidentally uh, move the level forward. I think it's fine. We'll we'll probably mm. add a button at some point. Fair. I was gonna say if I put it spacebar, that really wouldn't help. So uh, dot size up keys is a hash, isn't it? It is a, a set. Set. Whoa. Okay, so sets actually have size. That's great. Greater than zero. Um, if it's greater than zero, then we're going to start play. This dot start play and set the game state to running. Mm -hmm. In that order. I thought I just drew through a wall. Oh, wait. Spacebar is great. Spacebar is. Ah. Yeah, so we don't need to start play again. I think we can get rid of the one eight, line 187 because the initializer of the running state will will take care of that. The initializer. Line 150. Yep. Oh man, I gotta I gotta start thinking about state machines. That's cool. Yeah, that's like this is like the component did mount sort of stuff up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To use the React terminology. I love it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I do think the. The any any key is a lot because you're moving. I think I'd really like this to be spacebar. Okay, no problem. Because uh, that's not a that's not a um, ASCII spacebar. Not a, not a key we're using at the moment, at least. Is it thirty three? You know, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give the turrets a little less health. Yeah, makes sense. Because boy, these are taking a while. Okay, so I can't shoot anymore, and if I hit spacebar, well, unfortunately I don't know what I'm hitting. It's not 33. You don't have to remember what it, what it was, do you? 
Yeah, the uh, it's weird. The uh, it's not quite ASCII codes, but it's close. It's not. I don't know why they re they re redid this. It's ridiculous. Um, let's see. I'm on the space. Space is. It looks like it's 32. It's. Are you serious? <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. That does look like it's 32. I can shoot. Were you still able to move or were you still be able to drive around during the level complete state? Yes, because the only thing that's off is the shooter. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because we, we were thinking that bullets shouldn't stop. Yeah. So it probably means that like we need a different system for keyboard input than like oh. motion should be ballistics, mm -hmm. I guess. It's complicated, right? Because if the, if a ta if a player ta if a player has velocity, you probably want that velocity to kind of drift to zero or, or hard stop immediately. Mm -hmm. So we probably want some special handling for the player in these types of situations, anyways. Yep, that makes sense. But yeah, I can definitely I can still go around. I can't shoot, but I, I can hit spacebar to bring us back here. Okay, that's cool. Um, when you died, did we get a you died screen? Did it? Oh, it's it's given us a great you died screen. Okay. okay I love great. it. I and love then it so much. Okay, great. Yeah, and that'll just restart, then, restart the same level. Oh, uh, it, it restarts. It restarts the game. I think. I think I did that. Um, oh, because did the current level get set to uh, to zero in the constructor? Oh, oh, I, I see. Yes, I, okay, I put cool. that in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is a harsh and brutal reality that you exist in in this game. Like if you maybe lose... maybe you got to find that bonfire yeah, to uh, get past exactly. the you died. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Otherwise, you're an emaciated skeleton in, a, in an underground prison. Man, that game was weird. I kind of love it, but it's weird. <laughs> uh, okay, this level is gonna be really hard to beat, even still. Um, so yeah, should we, uh, let's see how, where's that you died text coming from? That's over here. I'm going to put a very similar one for a space bar. Oh yeah. I'm into it. Uh, if it is level complete, uh, you win. And this will be fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we gotta push it down a little bit, I guess. Right. Um, you can do yeah. a, a, a vector add on top of that. So yep. you. I like that. So this is you found the center point, um, and the text align center, like, like it's taking a point and it's aligning the text around. Like center means like the center point is that point is the center of the text. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm I'm amazed how much is in this little canvas context uh, from values. And then we want zero and like, I don't know, 50. Is there don't a comma reformat. missing maybe? As I say, don't reformat all at once. Let's see. I think it's, it's a trailing point. comma after the vec2.add. Ah. Brilliant. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. That's... One thing that the that the text engine where where the where the sort of uh, metaphor breaks down is if if we do any scaling, like if we're, if we're zoomed out, the text is still going to like be the same size because like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, there's nothing scaling the, the there's nothing scaling the text based on the camera position because the mm -hmm. render, like I think the way that we pass text size to, unless we broke text out, like if the font was broken into, um, like if 24 pics in the text perimeter was actually a separate property, we could scale that pixel value by, uh, how far the camera was from it or something like that right oh interesting right huh. I'm gonna do... yeah 
yeah. I kind of think I still want like an even simpler text system than this. Maybe it doesn't get much simpler. Ah, uh, does this not work? I have found that it, like TypeScript doesn't know how to interpret spreads. I, that doesn't seem correct, but it works, right? It, I mean, like technically, what you're doing should be fine. Yeah, this is uh, it renders. Yeah, it's fine. It's loading. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, we could. Uh, you can make a closure right now here. You could add a render dot render text that mm -hmm. takes a bunch of optionals, maybe. Because well, it's, like, it's render text that takes like a content position and font for for this particular thing. Eh, I'm not gonna fight it right now. Okay. Yeah. There could be render any... util that like you know because like the way that I did this with was with union types, right? The, mm -hmm. Like the render takes an abstract renderable. There's no reason why that's necessary, right? Like you could just make the interface consume like the interface has to implement like a primitive draw like a like a rendering pr a, a function for every single primitive type right we could mm -hmm. have like render text render line render circle um all of that is totally fine did you see that yeah you were overlapping a little bit i Just... drove into the wall damn it Ugh. Well, I, I I wouldn't feel too bad about it. Like I, I've had in mind uh, like a very very comprehensive rewrite of our whole wall collision system. Um, Fair. Now that we are better at math, ostensibly. We we got our we got our two D matrix multiplication there, and I feel clever. So. Yeah, because like our our line of sight algorithm is, I would say, perfect, in the geometric I, I, sense, right? I would say I would say perfect. Yeah. Uh, our 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 wall collision stuff is highly imperfect. Um, what we really want is a kind of projected square or mm. extruded square kind of collision. Like take a square, it, like <laughs> extrude it over the path that it that it took, and see if it collided with anything along the way, and then and then scooch it back along that path. Mm -hmm. um, that'd be kind of like a much more robust way of handling it, I think. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, okay, cool. So that's. That's winning the game, sort of. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, when I hit space, that resets my health too. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think the player gets fully destroyed and re reconstituted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. There's some stuff we could do. We could keep the player from moving in this state. Okay. Yeah, that that actually seems pretty reasonable. Let's let's see yeah. what that looks like. Um. And it's because in the game, our system just keeps going with motion. Yeah, so maybe we have like a player, like a client input or player input system, and we just we just take the logic in the and we we probably would remove the entire motion script from the player. Oh, interesting. Uh, so taking this. And just like putting it becomes, into the system. Yeah. This becomes the player system. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I guess it, it I think what you're saying is that it's specific enough that like we only really have one player motion thing. Mm -hmm. Uh mm -hmm. Okay. I think that makes sense. And uh, yeah, I mean I, I think that's yeah. So we we also like you could make the argument that perhaps the shooter should also be moved out as well, but I actually think that the shooter behavior common across all all entities like is, is is working for us now, so I think it's fine. If we just... So far, so good. Yeah, yeah, but but you're right. <laughs> yeah, and there's oh man, there's so many different ways we could do this, right? One other thing this could be is sort of like a player input handler, and mm. it includes the shooting, but all you do is like in queue a shoot message into the actual shooter component, uh, that's another way that we could do that. And then if we're not updating the shooter component, you don't actually shoot, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. No, that's got a lot of potential. Yeah. Capital uh, G game. Capital G game. Uh, OK, so let's see. So we got a whole bunch of this stuff. 
And then this transform is actually the player transform. Yep. And that's... Do we get a DT for system updates? Uh, we can do whatever we want. Some of them do, some of them don't. Oh, some of them do. Oh, great. But it, yeah, it's, it's sort of at the it's at the high level, at least. Yes. Great. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, I think the, the, the rule of thumb is that a system is whatever we want it to be. All it is is code that would have been in like the main update of the, of the top level game, but we packaged it out. That's, I think, as, as restrictive as we want to be about what a system could be. Cool. That's so great. Uh, okay, so this really, this, uh, I love it. Because we were, were, we were doing some entity ID lookups too, weren't we? Nope, it's just unused, transform is just the player. Uh, then this is just game and DT number. This is applying the function twice. Uh, and I guess if I call this game, oops, Gets back to where it is. So then we want uh, let player equals game dot player, and really what we want is let transform equals game dot player dot. Uh, unwrap. Ah, thank you. Yeah. And I guess it's one of those. Cool. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, interestingly, not working yet. Okay. The state should be running. Oh, I don't think I hit save on the game file. Yep, works great. And then if I win, yep, I can no longer move. Delightful. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. That was easy. <laughs> uh, I, that makes a lot of sense. I, I like the way I like the way that works. Yeah. Motion script. I think this means that our motion script is completely gone. Oh, the, well, what about the turrets? The turrets have motion scripts, right? Mm, oh, they, they do. They do. That's true. Yeah. Uh, did we lose generic interface? Uh, we did because okay. the components are just state now. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Only some of the components are actually scripts. And I was actually even thinking about changing this to not be like the scripts like could the scripts maybe be should just be i script oh but damage doesn't work yeah okay. that one i don't think that abb needs to be there to be totally honest but i'm not 100 sure yet um is it why is the damager have experience abb yeah oh i think it's uh i think it's for debug draw maybe it might just be called internally and if so we can get rid of that I agree. Where are our damage? Oh, there are shooter scripts. Damager. Ah, it's the bullet, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the bullet is the only one? Great. And then you might be able to do a find symbol, find, find references on the interface to see who's calling it. Um, wait, how do I do that? Find references to bullet you, damager? Go or to the damager damage. script def declaration. Mm -hmm. And then do find all references. What? Yeah. Dang, dude. Uh, just debug draw. On the... On the damager. System. Oh, okay, so the system does care. Um... All right, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to fight it. Yeah. Um, cool. OK. Well, that's great. Let's see. What What else, man? Um, we have level progression. It's incredible. Uh, honestly, that was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, same. <laughs> that really uh, that just happened. Yeah. There... Systems. Systems are working. We could refactor the you died and I don't know how much we want to abstract yet. Same. Okay. Okay. So, so because I was going to say that you died and, and level complete are our kissing cousins, but not quite clones, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and is there is there 
something simpler that would allow us to do. But really, I, I don't know, it, wor it works right now. I'd say once we get to the third thing, right? Rule, the, the, that's the sort of famous yeah. rule of abstraction. Once you do the third thing, then you probably have an abstraction, right? But not earlier. I'm into it. Yeah. yeah. What? Let's see. I was kind of interested in thinking about like player inventory or pickups. Like I think I mentioned that sort of off stream mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We could certainly we could make the we could make the second level a lot easier to beat if we put a power up that gave you like quad damage. What about healing? That could be something too. Oh, I I like both of those because now that we have this health bar, yeah. Yeah. So let's I, let's add pickups that? that do nothing. Like let's add the let's just add something that will allow you to pick something up. Let like you pick you, it up. You roll over it and no, it just disappears, right? It's okay. a whole new yeah. entity type. That that seems reasonable. And yeah, pickups I guess are one of those common sort of you that is a giant class of game objects. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's start here. Um, what is what is our nothing pickup called? Nothing, nada. So let's see. So these are entities, mm -hmm. and I guess sort of like the player, we're gonna export a construction function. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Okay. Const make. Not a pickup equals, and it just—I love that it just returns an entity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of there. And then I fix you. Ah, it's the fix-up that's wrong. Interesting. It doesn't realize that you want like workspace relative paths. Yeah, but if you let it do this, it does. Nope. Damn, I thought I fixed that like twice now. <laughs> oh. It'll happen. I, I have it, faith. It will. Yeah. Um, so, so an entity, it's not a, um, it's not a wall collider, but it is a collider. Like we need to know when you touch it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the precedence that we have is wall collision, which is a whole gnarly thing. And then we also have damage collision as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How does our uh, our bullet damager? It's just doing a box inside. Yeah, it's doing an overlap check. Okay. Mm. This is you know. I Fine. feel like the yeah I feel like the AB overlap for that has been pretty chill. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we're gonna we're gonna take this with a. Uh, it certainly needs a transform. Mm -hmm. You jerk. <laughs> you absolute jerk. Um, and gosh, I guess I guess we're doing it again. Um, yeah. All right, either off stream or next stream, we're we're adding tags. Yeah. There is no way around it. Yeah, I, I read an exciting article about um, TypeScript four point and variadic tuple types, mm -hmm. and the the article I read was actually trying. Uh, their, their example was inner join which I was excited about because we're actually trying to do joints. Um, so I would be interested to see how much we can take away from that. Um, That'd be great. It's a super complicated, uh, it's a super complicated uh, topic. Mm. Uh, because what, what you would want in a join, like a query function for entities in addition to tags is like, I, I think the ideal interface is you pass in the component class so you'd pass in transform or, or, or damage or script or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And you'd say, give me, give me the set, the tuple, like all tuples of these components where they share the same entity ID. That's the sort of idea of like a database join, right? But you want the return type to be not a tuple of the input types, because the input types are the class 
classes. You want instances of the classes, right? So you want like almost like a conversion of the input types into a different one, hmm. right? And TypeScript actually does let you do that. They have this notion of mapped types. So you imagine like you have your input type is a Boolean and your output type is like a box of Boolean. You can do that kind of thing, right? You can say like, I want it. To, but how do you do it with a variadic number of types, right? Like a, like a yeah. spread number of types. How do you express that syntactically? Logically, it kind of makes sense, but like, yeah. <laughs> So it's, uh, I, I'm excited to kind of read that article and see exactly where it will take us. That's going to be really cool. Yeah, it will be very, very cool. Um, Man, TypeScript is, Microsoft's just doing such a good job. Definitely. Yeah, at this point, um, just the level of maturity of it and the productivity you get out of it. It's what was the, what was the first time TypeScript came? Like I remember first hearing about it in like 2014. I want to say. VS Code and TypeScript were kind of it came out around the same time. I want to say. Gosh, really? Because I didn't take it ser- I didn't take any of that seriously. At I didn't all, take it then. seriously at all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's not that old, is it? It might uh, be. TypeScript and VS Code. All right, let's do a little bit of a technology history here. Yeah. Wow, you nailed 2014. 2015 was the initial release of Visual Studio Code. Okay. April 9th, er, April 29, 2015, so a little over five years old. Um, mm-hmm. Now I would say basically dominant in the web development scene. Yeah, yeah. My uh, my work actually is uses RubyMine, and people are starting to revolt, and they're just like, give us VS Code, please. Yeah. Yeah. Which I love. Uh, VS- are you using RubyMine yourself? No, I'm part of the VS Code revolution. Okay. <laughs> That's right, because your team is kind of like isolated. You can kind of pick your own tech and yeah, well, and, that... and especially as you move to more JavaScript, like VS Code is a better editor for it. Uh, I think people just like you know this is so much faster than RubyMine. It doesn't cause like strange system level Java issues. There's 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 a lot to love. Tony was a big RubyMine guy, right? I'm not surprised because it does like static analysis on Ruby and like. Finds finds security and like performance issues for you. So yeah, and and does like Ruby refactoring. There's a lot of stuff that like you, a normal editor couldn't do, but like VS Code can do to TypeScript basically because it understands it better. And, and RubyMine is what IntelliJ under the hood. Yeah, yeah, same as Android Studio. It's yeah. Okay, it's IntelliJ. Yeah, and IntelliJ mm-hmm. was always like the best of the Java-based editors. I think yeah, like way better I, than I Eclipse, don't mind them. Right? Yeah. yeah. I just don't um, want to use them. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I wonder how those editors have evolved in the like the LSP world, right? Because um, mm-hmm. VS Code and LSP are evolving hand in hand, and I think VS Code has the probably the very best LSP implementation. But by definition, it's kind of like those teams sit across the hall from each other. Yep. Um, yeah, and and something about the way, yeah, just the way that. Um... I don't know. I feel like I feel like VS Code unlocks a lot of things for me that Atom and Sublime never could, and it must it must all come down to that like language server stuff. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I'm I'm one of the I'm probably the one of the last Sublime holdouts uh, at my at my at my work, and it's really like I think purely a performance thing. Um, mm. Just the, the the language runtime that we or the language and static analysis runtime that we have for our, the language that we use at work. Uh, is a little bit immature and it doesn't run very well on Mac, and so we've run it through a Docker <laughs> image. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I wasn't actually. I was never really clear on exactly why that was the case, um, but hmm. so it was too slow, so I stopped using it. And, and and if the code base is really big, you start to need like a pretty beefy computer. Um, I'm kind of just like I just don't want to. Yeah, like I want to spend my CPU cycles on Java. When like Node and the iOS simulator will take up as, as much as they can, I'm just like, oh, don't put Java on here. Like, just run it in a browser. You've already right. got the browser running. Right. You've already, you've already sacrificed those resources. It's fine. Right. Uh, I do not know how I web development will go in like a year when my Mac is based on some strange Apple ARM processor. I wonder if it's going to be great or kill it. That is super interesting people are very casual about the Mm -hmm. isa change right 
Um, <laughs> people are like, oh yeah, Apple did it before. It's, it'll be fine. I mean, They're just they, talking they, about they like they how did. bad it will be for <laughs> Intel, right? Um, yeah. And it does does seem that people are a little bit too blasé about the impact on the developer ecosystem for for Apple, mm-hmm. uh, and the bifurcation of the user base as well. Because yeah, like what was PowerPC before, right? PowerPC to Intel it was around yep. what two thousand five, two thousand six. Um, yeah, it's been a solid fifteen years, and that transition was actually pretty easy. Yeah, but the what was the user base like for Mac? Uh, was it as dominant as because Mac is pretty pervasive in like the business realm right now, right? Um, yeah, well, and I think it became so for being like the good Lin- Unix, Linux, whatever, right? Like if you wanted to do development and have security, it was like, oh, get a Mac. Like Paul Graham had this like essay. Yeah, white combinator Paul Graham, right? Um, oh, I know Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, PG. Locked, locked on Twitter by Paul Good old, good old PG. Uh, he uh, he had an essay in like 2006 or 2007. He's like, all the smartest smartest hackers I know. Like, that's a classic PG phrase, smartest hackers I know. Um, he, I think he had some essay about like, the smartest hackers I know are now, now using Macs, mm. you know, as their Unix machine, right? It's, you know, he's not wrong. It, it he is, a really, it, it's a good setup. It's not, he's not wrong. Yeah, I mean, when I installed Linux on my other Mac the other day, I'm like, okay, cool. I have got, I've got Linux on my Mac. And I'm like, wait, I already had Unix on my Mac. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Um, I think I think my, my take is that for development, it actually will change nothing because every... Like every Ruby and Node I install, I compile onto my system. It's not like I download some rando binary. It's like I actually like compiled that to my machine. Yeah, it, it feels like there are some minute differences at the edges. Like um, it's the BSD versus GNU flavors of the Unix tools, right? Mm-hmm. That, that'll sometimes bite you in terms of reading documentation or capabilities. Mm-hmm. I think the GNU ones tend to be a lot more featureful in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, oh, I see. I was about to say something like, um, like, tracing algorithms and that that kind of thing. Like, can you like monitor syscalls? But I actually think that dtrace, which is what you have in a BSD system, is better than strace, which is what you have in a Linux system, right? So, <laughs> like, maybe you're just better off being on a Mac in general. Yeah, and I guess like none of that changes. They just ship you a different, like, low-level architecture. So. Yeah. Well, if you Weird. want to build, if you want to build an application for Linux, you should probably be using Linux. I suppose that's it, right? I think that's fair, but like, yeah. why would I want to build an application for Linux? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to do it more and more. You know, like I, I like the idea of if, if my if my career goes a little bit more low low level mm. than the browser from here on out. Like that would be interesting. Ah, that is interesting. I I want to I want to stick with mobile, and I think I'd like to get away from React Native eventually into just like like Swift. Like cool, yeah. cool graphic, fast mobile. Yes, uh, which is good because actually a lot of these game skills are kind of the same thing. If I'm writing animation and event loops, yeah, turn, turns out. Have you, uh, boy? This 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 stream is quickly becoming like the sort of like Jeff and Dom make a conversation about web technology. Um, yeah, we were we were, look at all the shit we wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question is like, have you heard of Flutter? Yeah, I have, and I I know people who swear by it hmm. over over React Native. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looked really cool. I didn't I didn't see a reason to like pivot my entire career into a Google technology. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick with the Facebook technology. I don't know. Well, it, it's just that Google does not have a very good track record of standing behind its right like developer tools in particular right Um, i uh yeah i'm i'm skeptical (laughs) like do they have the backbone that microsoft does like microsoft like went all in on vs code and that whole ecosystem right and and it's so impressive yeah yeah, it's very impressive yeah i don't expect that from from google so yeah (laughs) so there's one thing that's cool about flutter which is that they use Mm -hmm. the dart language and i only know about this because bob nystrom our favorite guy uh, who has appeared multiple times in reference on this stream, um, works on the Dart language. And you know how you, we have this red operator for composing arrays, mm-hmm. array literals? They have the conditional composition operator where you can write something in an array literal 
Mm -hmm. and then I think append it with if some condition, some runtime condition, like a Ruby one line if. And what that will mean is it will oh, add it into okay. the array if it's if that conditional is successful, but it will omit it from the array if it's not. And so I like, wanted to do that. It's like a read out push like blank if some truth. But do it in an array literal, right? Do it in an array like with like square brackets. So if you oh. do like square bracket zero comma one comma two if some condition comma what zero comma one. What? Yeah, they oh, do that. Oh, mm, that's neat. And they do that for objects as well, right? Uh, I want this all the time. I have wanted it all the time, yeah. Because <laughs> what you end up doing if you don't have that is you, you, have, you break the if out into its own statement mm -hmm. block, right, later on. Right, you're like, confx equals yeah, the one. Yeah, exactly. If truth yeah. x2 equals two. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> So hey, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. What, it's what do you really call good. Condition, conditional assignment. Uh, I, I forget what he calls what they call it. Dart array conditional uh, operator. Cause I love it. Oh, oh. No, that's nowhere spread. This is there's a collection if stuff. that's what he calls it collection if and collection for start collection if yeah. I think and... you had it right there yeah <sighs> that's neat yeah you can uh, see that right there man. yeah yeah and then um. The, the, the for loop is right, the for example is right below that, actually. So you... Oh, sorry, I lost, I lost my... There we go. Um, oh. Come and on, really? If you could do that for key value objects as well, that would be That'd a be game amazing. changer. Right. TypeScript collection F. So I, like, the nice thing is type, you could just put this in TypeScript. You could, you definitely could. Or, or ES6 or whatever you know, transform we're using. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. All right. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> let's get back to pickups, shall we? You that got was a, me that there. Was a, yeah. I, I want that. Yeah. Yeah. Okie doke. Uh, I'm going to make this entity. Why, why does the player take a path anyway? What, what do we use this for? It, we don't. It, it was my way of, so this is what the premature, uh, abstraction here uh, is my way of trying to come up with a renderable that represented the player both in the level editor and the game but it's not uh, even it's thanks. not even representative anymore because now the player's model is like a bunch of it's like the player has the body mm -hmm. and the turret so it's all a bunch of horseshit now uh <laughs> what uh <laughs> whatever yeah I see. Um, it's because you use this, right? You serialize it and use this model on the level editor. Exactly. That makes sense. And then I tried to, and this allows you to make it consistent between, but it's not even, it's the only thing it's true for now is the wall, right? Because like the, uh, both the turret and the player now have complex renderings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if anything, the entities that we, Render in the level editor should probably share more code with the game, right? Maybe we should. Mm -hmm. We should well, use it's nice. Yeah. As I say, it's nice that, in fact, like, Makewell does use this model, but it's pretty unnecessary. Does the turret or does the level editor call Makewell? It does, right? No, it doesn't. Level editor just takes the model. It just takes the model. I yeah. see. Ooh, can we, can we serialize multiple letters into here? We can, right? It's just a string. Yeah, yeah, you okay. can do whatever. I'm not even sure if serialize is used. Is that used anywhere? I assume it's the letter. Um, don't we? Don't we need it to actually? 
What does the map the, look like? If you go into the map, ah, the JSON there. file. Uh huh. I thought it was the full string. I thought it just said like the full world. Yeah, I don't even know what the hell I was doing there. I'm not sure. Okay, we'll come back to that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, but I do need to, at the very least, uh, let's see. Yeah, we serialized is follow the, that style uh, model. What does that stand for, TK? Um, God, I don't know, but it means you're supposed to remove it. Right. To come. Oh. Uh, uh, TK is, I, I know it's TK because it doesn't, sh those two letters don't show up in English. Okay. That's. Yeah. That that's great. That's a very nice and weird convention. Uh, they do show up in hashes, <laughs> but but otherwise it's not like a it's not a common word. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Cool. So that. What are you grumpy about? I can't. I can't even see the error it's given me. Oh, I can scroll the error. Huh. I thought I did the right thing. Do we need to fill out more of the not Maybe. a pickup object? In under type definitions. Does that need to be oh mode. Um I, I think we just have a typo. Oh, great. It should be model, line fifty six. Thank you. And uh, I think it's an array and not an object. The model is an array of points. Oh, no, no, it totally is. Maybe yeah, we I'm need to actually it. fill it out a little bit more, and maybe it needs okay. to be like path. Yeah, let's give it a path. Empty array. And a fill style of uh, not magenta, not pink. Um, well, we should probably fill out a model here because the level editor is going to use this um, mm -hmm. to draw it. So we could, yeah, let's pick up this, let's copy the square. Just, just, just yep. copy the wall, yeah. Or the whole thing, the path to from val from values. That's a good point. Oh, path. Still not happy. Uh, oh, I, it's, I see. Uh, the make function actually needs to take a model. Right? Yeah. It's expecting that signature to uh, this. Yep. And then you want a path to. Which should probably be a class that we get rid of entirely. It doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah, it does not. All it is is that utility function. All right, we got some stuff to clean up there. Mm -hmm. Why does this not like it? Uh, let's see, did I do this wrong? It's like it doesn't think it's exhaustive. Technicians turret wall. Uh, this is actually really interesting. It's technicians is player turret wall and then the stops. Uh, what if we uh, did a reload on the editor? Yeah. It's a very, oops, very solid choice for fixing BS code problems. JavaScript. Yep. You're gonna have to rerun the game, which is the one thing that I call. Ah, I mute my server. Yep. Whew. I can see it chugging, chugging, chugging away. Come on. Process all those sweet types. It looks like it's happier now. Good call. Ooh, boy, this computer yeah. is unhappy. I, oh yeah, good, I'm broadcasting my CPU usage to the world. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. And this is not a very large project. So all, all the good things that we said about TypeScript, um, it all goes out the window as soon as you get over, get to a project of any complexity, you know? Is it, are we hitting that? I wonder if we have some sort of, 
I'm going to write something hard for TypeScript because I feel like this isn't that like complex yet. Some kind of recursive type definition or... Yeah, I wonder if we're making it work really hard to build that tree. Yeah. Do we crash the game? Um, I hit reload. Oh. I might have crashed the game. It's still it's still building too. Uh, I see. Yes, that's what, that's what happened. Cool. I mean, I think, I think it's also maybe... Yeah. It's it definitely continues just to complain about type definition. So we do have a legit <sighs> error there. Dang. If you do yarn type check, does that? Great question. Yarn type check. Should give us the same error. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Let's, let's see if there's anything that I can just destroy. Ooh, fireworks. Here, I thought they'd be done by now. I think people might have some leftover from yesterday. Got to do something with them, right? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, it's not like they haven't had leftovers for the last, like, six weeks, so. <laughs> true, true. Okay, come now. Uh, see, this is this is definitely... Oh, ah, hello, Tuple. Are you doing it to us? Hmm. Mm -hmm, hmm. Tuple, confessedly, has been quite the hog recently i'm gonna i'm gonna turn my sharing off for a second i'm just gonna yeah give give tuple a little little break no problem T take a little tuple break i will watch on the stream huh, there you go yeah ah oh wow I, I did that and i got 200 cpu percent back so that's something uh yeah i guess that's probably something they'll need to figure out yep boy did i did i try turning it off and on again yes i did okay uh so let's see ah Player move. Oh, this is actually very interesting. <laughs> Player mover systems line sixty. Did we just like leave something over here, and the entire type system has been broken the whole time? Oh wow, yeah, we did. That's funny. What in the world? I had I had one too many closing braces, so that was an error. But did the, the, the JavaScript compile this entire time? Guess so. They maybe might not we, care. We maybe we weren't even testing this. All the stuff that we thought we were testing, it wasn't actually testing. Mm, no, this system turned off. I tested that. Now we got some type errors. Okay. Uh, can't be used to index type. Player turret wall type pickup nada does not exist on type. If uh, let's see, hang on. What is type definitions? Where is that? Um, I mean, it's it's just defined here, right? Can we find all the references to it? Are we yeah. expecting something a little bit more rigid than that somewhere? I bet the uh, you know I bet it's in the level editor. I did something stupid. It's it's only used in here though. Huh. Interesting. Let's look for let's look for another like capital A capital T turret. I see the map. I see it in the map. I see it in here. And then I see it over in entities type. Types dot type dot pickup not a So I I wonder if that reflected back to this somehow. Let's close this and run right. it again. That's a that's a silly problem, but uh so it's 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 very strange because we are iterating over the keys of type definitions. Mm hmm And that's what K is. Mm hmm And then we pull we on line seventy four we immediately pull it out. So that should be 100% type safe. Well, it's interesting because type definitions here does, mm -hmm. doesn't even see it. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, we're, 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 we're in an indent level. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. And um, I'm actually, um, the meta conversation. Uh, yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> so... Um, we uh, we have a question on the stream. Ooh. Hello, Jay Lavelle seventy one. Uh, Howdy. 
Are we pair programming? The answer is yes, we are pair programming. That is the idea of the stream. We're pair programming a video game. Uh, the second question is, where are the viewers? Um, and uh, I don't know. This is pretty pre pretty typical right now. Uh, yeah, we haven't marketed care. this. We haven't really marketed the stream too too aggressively. But thank you for stopping by. Yeah, um, this is this is as much fun for us as it is for anyone to watch. Well, it's probably more fun for us. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of is this pair programming? Like, we're definitely doing the the driver passenger model, and we swap back and forth every time. Uh, I think there's also the like two keyboards model, which we we could enable, but it's been nice just to rotate. I can draw at least. Do yeah, I, I, I do. I, I do. I do have the ability to actually take over your keyboard, though, right? Yeah. Oh, in the in your tuple thing, hit the go to the top of the thing, mm -hmm. and there's a there's like a mouse, and then there's one that looks like two mouses. Click the one that's two mouses. Do do mode. Oh, now you know. now we each have a cursor. Oh. Holy shit! You just made my cursor work so <laughs> fast, though. What the heck? Um, I don't seem to be able to type, though. Uh, do you have the keyboard? Oh, I checked. don't. I don't. Yeah. I'm not going to mess with that. That seems a little <laughs> bit dangerous. Uh, but uh, I can play the game. You were playing the game last time, right? Yeah, I've, I've typed into your computer before. It it, it works. Yeah. Um. So sweet. Yeah. Where where are the viewers? We, we could we could market it more. I feel like people are actually like I told a coworker about this, and he was like, "You are just doing live TDD development of a game like that's really sick." And I'm like, "It is really sick." Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I told a couple of colleagues who 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 said they would be really into the idea. It's just um, I don't know if our timing I, is not right, or, or it I just mean, takes a lot to to spend two hours to watch people program, right? Yeah, to, to be fair, like, I don't watch people program on Twitch, so, like, I don't know. <laughs> We're not using the Elgato Stadium view, though, right? We're not using the Sports Center desk. We're not. No. Like, our, our graphics game and our effects game is pretty. I went back to OBS, not, but, not uh, yeah. 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 But we could. We could. It'd be cool. We, we did lose the, the, the party parrots. Uh, that we're saying cool programmers stream. Um, I I know I got that might have been a net win windows. though. I don't, I don't know. That might have <laughs> that might have that might have been a good thing, right? But I don't. Know. I I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I I don't necessarily miss them. Yeah. By the way, I'm turning I'm turning this into a diamond instead of a square. I like diamonds. They're forever. Yeah. Whew. Can we make them uh, blue diamonds uh, in honor of Elizabeth Taylor? I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah, blue. Blue. These have always brought me luck. <laughs> you remember that ad? Oh yeah. Uh, so let's see. If I if I go to the map editor, I think it's tools slash map. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then if I can open files, there we go. We're getting there. It's happening. Is it happening? Where's, we where's break my it? map? Uh, dude, I'm not sure I've been able to load files at all. Crud. <laughs> Maybe oh, the recent or, I was going to say, or did we break it with the change? That's a good question. Yeah. So you mentioned TDD. We're actually not really TDD so much. But. He watched us do the collision test one, though, where, where, where we did TDD it. Yeah. You failed to provide a prop type. Uh, that warning has always been there. Uh, it's because I didn't do the checkbox correctly for the layer selector. We can do some oh. little bit of debugging right now, though. I'm happy to do that. Uh, F dot text. It was in controls. I swear, I want to. I'm just gonna let's. See. Yeah, I absolutely want to do this. This is. I'm into it. Ah, okay. Wait here. here. So what is F? F is files. Let's just log out the file. Is it because I didn't give Safari permission to like view my downloads folder or something? Some. Uh, let's see. Oops. Ah. Sorry, I'm trying to get this out from behind my face because I see what the stream sees, which is interesting. Yeah, I that looked reasonable. Um, yeah, that that's a that's a file. So why is F this? Check. Hang on. If I use Chrome, is this gonna work? You just pick up some Chrome-specific file extension. Yeah, I've been using Firefox 
Oh, um, Firefox. Okay. Well, I I still blame Safari. That's like really safe. Did uh, the the stream go down? By the way. Oh, there we. Go. I think I just I think it just went down for me. Sorry. Oh. Hmm. We're good. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Welcome I still alarm. see. I still see green. We've sent out four gigabytes of data so far. Boy. Which is which is cool. Yeah. It's what like the entire world was sending in 1996 you know <laughs> i was gonna say we are uh, yeah we're using we're using the tools provided to us really really well uh, okay so this is just a, this is just an api thing sorry about that yeah no it's okay i will sort that out later i think safari just doesn't doesn't even know what that is um okay so let's yeah, see i, I, I want... don't know if you noticed but i added the uh i added a polyfill for saving to disk uh so it's like probably the 99 percent of our dependencies in this project Oh, we've got blue diamonds. <laughs> I was thinking diamond would be a nice power up color because we could, or power up shape because we could just recolor them to sort of get a sense of what what we're doing. It's perfect. Yeah. Uh, it's perfect, Doctor. <laughs> okay, great. So now we've got a power up in our. Oh my gosh, it's fine. Calm down, Mac OS. So now if I go over here, I think there's a power up here that doesn't render itself. We'll find out. Uh, I guess I can search in this file for pickup. Uh, was it TKTK or? Oh, nada. I see it. You see? Oh, great. Yeah, there it is. Cool. Uh, I don't cool, think cool, that cool. serialized serialization variable is being used for anything. Something to so. it. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, come now. I wonder if we should switch to a different map format at some point. Uh, I'm down for that. Yeah. And then the serialization thing might matter at that point. Uh, <laughs> JSON is like this is this is cumbersome, right? Like <laughs> it's a it's a little something, yeah. Yeah. I, I also want to be able to resize the maps because uh, they're not all fixed to size. Oh yeah, instead of sixty four by sixty four, yeah. Yes. I noticed I was playing on a I was playing this on a big monitor, and it looped the map outside the bounds because I was looking at something that was more than 64 tiles wide and it had like interesting render artifacts too so that's cool yeah it was neat uh but maybe you think we need like a we need we need a something else in there so it doesn't it doesn't draw magenta beyond the play field anymore it did for some of it but I think it like I think it looped into like negative map tiles on itself I could see that yeah, because we never yeah, cause, we never constrain the viewport, right? Right, right. Because we're we're in the play field, right? So, how is it different than what we're seeing right now, right? Because we are seeing a a play field that is smaller than the viewport, right? Yeah, I'll have to. Let's see. Here, let me let me win the level and see if I can reproduce this for you on the next one. That's Great. also not that big a deal, but yeah. This. Oh yeah. Hey so now. It's not. It's not. It's rendering the lake over here again isn't that interesting and then offset by one so I, I think it's like negative indexing into the map as it like runs out of space well the thing is the camera should be hitting the boundary right it should be recentering based on that but uh... yeah but the the, the the camera well i i don't know because can i i think i can't drive over here yeah yeah so the play field clamping is working correctly but for some reason the camera is allowing itself to render outside of that well, it's it's because the camera is bigger than the game. Did you just drive through the wall? I did. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I think actually, you know what? I think I'm skipping frames. My game is getting jittery, and I think it's not. Or we just broke everything. Who knows, man? Maybe, maybe everything just got broken. Okay. Uh, cool. yeah, that's interesting. Let's let's go to the board. How do we test this thing? How like like in the general, game itself? Yeah. I'm asking a philosophical question because mm. I don't want to do like. I mean, my testing right now is I like run the game and I you like play the game, do yeah. things and I die. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the scalability of that is is, is somewhat limited. Um, but. And then, and then also the replicability of that in an automated way is very difficult, right? Like mm -hmm. literally translating the manual QA is like having to specify what you're looking for. 
and you almost have to like rewrite the code a little bit. It's like, how do you know what a wall is in an automated test? You know, like yeah. Um, that's, so that's a good question. Yeah, I huh. came up in the world in the game industry, and there was at least when I was learning how to do this stuff, there was almost no. Uh, there was almost no. Uh, uh, automated tests to speak of that's not true anymore hmm. um but i guess it's not too dissimilar to how do you test a react pro front-end react project right like it, like a lot of the like uh assertions that you can make are going to be on like the shadow dom or just like abstract things and maybe you're not modeling in terms of actual interactions mm-hmm so one way you could test the wall collider is you could just say, you know, like, I'm going to make a fake level in the test code, and I'm going to move the player towards the wall, and I want to make sure that the player just, like, doesn't tr cross the right. wall, and you're literally calling updates. Right, you know? it's like run run 60 updates with this key held down, and the position should stop here. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, this is odd. It's pretty broke. It's it's very, I, it's very broke. I just yeah. wonder. I can't figure out. Well, let's I, hang on. I think it's okay if we don't figure it out. Um, you know. Oh yeah, I, I'm. Yeah. We might not figure it out now. I agree with that. Yeah. We will figure it out later. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh right. So I was. We were doing pickups. We're gonna yeah. render this sucker. Yeah. Uh. I think actually, you know what? I'll take the model. Let's. Let's give it a model. E dot renderable equals uh the wall does this already it's a new path renderable great that's all i want that's interesting so yeah. that's also oh wait uh sorry there was an error wasn't there Ha, ha. There it is. Sick. Sick. A delicious blue cookie. We're gonna get it. Yeah. We're gonna. We can collide with anything we want now. Okay. Uh, if I make this a a wall, I assume I still will be able to drive through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fine. The world is broken. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, um, yes, uh, a, a true sentiment of the times. Yeah, feels feels right. Um, okay, so in term in terms of pickups, uh, I guess there's a couple. I was thinking about this a couple ways. Like, does the player object have a list of entities itself that like it takes from the entity manager and like pops into player? It's like remove remove from the play field, stick it on the player, and then we can always like introspect like you picked up two blue diamonds. Oh yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, that, that's I don't my really like. Know. I didn't research this approach. What what, what are, what's your thought? Uh, so I, I would say we have a collision resolution system called the pickup system, mm -hmm. and then. Um, if we think that all pickups are going to work the same way, um, we remove the pickup entity as soon as the player collides with it, and then it's a question of where do we put the logic on what the what driving over the pickup should actually do, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it affects inventory, then we need an inventory component, right? We need state to model the inventory. Yep. If it's just a health boost, we could update the health right then and there in the system and just like stick it there and with no further abstraction, right? Okay, yeah. So then maybe, uh, yeah, then maybe there is, I mean, maybe these get a script of their own, essentially. Like this one does nothing, health, the script can say what to do. If it's like a power up, like we add a player inventory component that like the script knows how to look for and dig into uh so like pick up script interesting for each pickup uh yeah because i don't know if i want the system to have to track all that logic the system should be 
I agree. Okay. Sweet. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. What did I just do? This one. Yeah, bring, bring back some. Oh, not some. It's, uh, we probably want to filter. Uh, yeah, and the filter is on the array itself, right? Or, oh, no, oh, that's true. It's a, it, I was you just... have to do object.keys, right? Something like that. Uh, uh, but if we use Lodash, we can do this, right? Uh, as long as Lodash allows you to take objects, yes. Mm -hmm. That might be, that might be its saving grace for JavaScript stuff, is that it, like, kind of treats arrays and objects the same for all that nonsense. Yeah. Um, okay, so... I guess, is this very similar to our wall collider where we look at every entity, see if it's touching the player? Yeah, it's probably pretty similar to the damager, the bullet damager, actually. Yeah, I think that actually makes sense. Uh, take us to the bullet. Yep. Gotcha. Uh, except that it's like actually very specific to the player too. So we want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Player equals g dot player, uh, and then so you have four. What what comes out of this? An entity, right? Okay, cool. For const p in pickups. Um, if a e b b overlap player dot transform, I guess. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll get the players a a b b. Oh, gosh! This function shows up everywhere. <laughs> this dot hitbox. So this is interesting. How deep um, does this go? Yeah, we have a notion of the the hitbox and the harm box. Mm -hmm. And is that the same thing as so? Should we get this off of the damage, like uh, the player's damageable? Ah, that's... I think that's fair, right? Yeah, we need, to, we need to unwrap the player. That's why it's complaining. Uh, dot hit. What is what is the damage one the player giving us actually? Uh, I think damageables just have an ABB function on them, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. This dot. Which is just the yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, actually, okay. Hang on. Let's do. I feel like that want to be separate. This, uh, oh my god. Uh, we need the player's transform, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, cool. So then it's, so what we need is the pickups need an ABB, but actually it's probably fairly constant, right? Uh, do we have it in, maybe from segment? Yeah, there's a whole factoring of this concept of an ABB that probably needs to, a little bit more help here. Yeah, we have ABB. I feel like I want it right here. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, ABB, I'll call this player just to be safe. Um, and content ABB equals something. And so if we do that, we're going to say uh, p.pickup script with the player, maybe? Yeah, or even the, the game. Yeah. Game, just the game, yeah. Yeah. And then right. we would also delete the pickup as well. Probably. Ah, yeah. Uh, is that entity, game? Game.entities.delete. Dot dot 
delete or yeah, I forget what the function call is. Mark for deletion. Hmm. Cool. It might be yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, this should be G. Okay, so now we just need the pickups A A B B. Um, can make that another function on the pickups. The pickup. Pickup component. Oh, we don't have a. We don't no, have a pickup a, script. Yeah, yeah. Just, just an entity. Uh, it could be a part of the pickup script. Maybe that. Maybe that makes sense actually. Okay, so um, maybe rather than a pickup flag, we have a pickup script. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That seems reasonable. And then so it's under components interfaces. Uh, we would add a new uh, script type. Mm -hmm. and it would look like the damager or yeah. Yep. Fair. It's interesting. I feel like these are actually, it's like collider script and generic script or something. They're sort of trending into two generic types. Um, is this too much information though? Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. I, I like that yep. they're all like very specifically declaring their dependencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then our entity pickup is actually a pickup pickup script that is an I pickup script and it's optional and definitely not false. Uh, and then our const pickup script is in I pickup script. Oh, it's a class pickup script actually. And it extend it implements I oh. script. Yeah. And this is update and AABB. Mm -hmm. Pickup script is a new. Pickup script. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's. I get the sense that this is, in fact. Exactly the same. Yes. Just copy paste. Um, which does make me. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll get that out of there someday soon. Uh, it needs a hitbox then, probably. And gets constructed with a hitbox. Okay. Sure. 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 No health, none of that. Just this dot hitbox is hitbox. Yeah, I wonder if the there's another way to do this where the pickup probably could just use tile coordinates or something like that, and just say like my trans normalize my transform coordinate to the upper left corner of my tile and like make it the size of the tile or something. Yep. Um, this is a actually the way that we're doing it right now is very generic, so we could make like a gigantic pickup if we wanted. To. Oh, interesting. And that's kind of how you handle like those are like those invisible. Uh, if there's like invisible triggers in a lot of games that are doing just that, right? Uh, yes. Sort of? Yeah. Yeah, in a manner of speaking. In, in... Hitbox, I think, is... is just a geometric object. It's not a... It's it's way at the top, yeah. It's like you... Oh, weird. It's, yeah, it's at... It's there's at a the lot really of this level. that needs to be factored, I think. The whole collision, like, what is common about these things that are colliding and overlapping? What mm -hmm. is not common? What should be the same? What should not be the same. There's a lot of interesting questions yeah. there. It's good though. I, I, I feel like this is yet another instance where it sort of like forces us to reckon with like, what do we want to handle in that way? Yeah. Um, so I ain't complaining. Uh, let's see the damage well doesn't. Oh, sorry. I want a damager. Lordy. Okay. Yeah. The ABB is still the same thing. Great. Uh huh. And then the update function for the Nada pickup is actually Nada. It does nothing. Yeah. Nada. I love it. That's really cute. Come on, game. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. Uh, new pickup script. Oh, yeah, where is the... What does the hitbox look like? Yeah, it's just a tile. Mm -hmm. Copy that. Mm -hmm. Or that's a... As I said, give me the one from skinny. the turret. Yeah. yeah, there you go. 
yeah, it would actually, it'd be really cool to be able to sort of grab that really easily just to be like, it's a tile. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of repeat here, but I think there's a, there's like a, I think there might be a happy medium between making these all the exact same mm -hmm. script and typing everything out exhaustively. Yeah. I think we can have our cake and eat it too. Like I like that they're separate right now, but I don't like the amount mm -hmm. of extra like AABB declaration that we're making. Yeah, it's like this and this new hitbox, I think we can actually do a little better Yeah. Uh, in terms of like tile align things. And then let's see see what feels like it comes next. Yeah. Um, okay, so if... One thing that I... Mm -hmm. That might be good is like we have a notion of like a components like fallback box. It's like the the catch all hitbox that we just oh that's clever grab if we yeah need it you know because mm -hmm. otherwise you have, you were basically saying you have like a hitbox for like almost every different system right like this is kind of like the way it's gone right now right oh these are these are IDs aren't they. Uh, there are entities because you're using the filter there. Uh, well, but at this point, using... because yeah, at this point because the pickup script is no longer a boolean. I think we should just iterate over the entities and then do a continue if e dot pickup script is null, and that way. Okay. Yep. And that's an ID right. that like a li like, like P right. becomes an ID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. G dot entities dot entities ID. Uh, if yeah, if pickup. Now it almost make line eleven like entity or E or something like that because it, it, mm -hmm. the pickup we're gonna get confused between the pickup and the, the scripts. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah. If not pickup script. Continue. continue. Yeah. Cool. And then this is e dot pickup script dot abb pickup script e and it wants the transform so we could do ah. line twelve could also be or transform is null the transform is pretty much always going to be there I was, I feel like I'm so happy just to be yeah <laughs> just yeah. just to do that yeah um, let's see e dot pickup script. What's funny that it... Oh, uh, dot update, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, it's funny that it, it, it thinks that it could be null. Uh, oh, we just need... It doesn't think that. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to simplify this. I don't, I don't know what we would need that for yet, so I might, we might as well not write it, right? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, we could get rid of it entirely, right? And she could just like not update. <laughs> well, I, I, I at least feel confident that the pickup script update will be necessary. At some point, yeah. At some point, we yeah. Don't, we just don't know what it will be used for. Yeah. Right. But it will probably need the entity ID. It probably will, will, it will need to know what itself is, but. Mm -hmm. No, maybe not. But the pickup script is, is actually, look, it's like, specific to that pickup class, the Nada class, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, well, in interesting. Oh, the system isn't running. Let's mm. run the system, see what we get. Pickups, pickups from pickups. That, that's been hard to remember. It's so interesting, just like, I'm still just a real fan of this way of dropping new behavior in here. Mm -hmm. Oh man, okay. Something hates my game TS file. My computer is not happy about scrolling through this sucker. It's funny, this happened to me last time too, and, and so- It did, didn't it? it yeah. It feels like maybe Tuple has had a, like a pretty serious performance regression, right? Okay. Uh, let's see, what do you think after, after Wall Collider? I think that sounds right. It's yeah. sort of a similar. Though it's interesting, if you if you've touched it, if you pick it up, and it's like a multiplier or a health, it all happens before damageable and shooting. Yeah, I think that seems very reasonable. I think in those sort of like 
tie break cases, it's Boop. not going to be super noticeable what happens. All right, so we picked it up. We did it. Congratulations. <laughs> we, we, we've now created Pac-Man, because like in Pac-Man, what the hell did those little cookies do anyways? <laughs> I think they increase that, your score, right? That is a great point. Yeah. Boop. So if I do this, I should get four. Oh, man, I should have saved that formatting. VS code Y. I don't know why it's trying to format. I, I, I felt like I corrected. That's a, that's a thing that I felt like I corrected a couple times. But Yeah, same. I thought I was really explicit about do, 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 do. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's great. Still driving through walls, but you know yeah, what? Right. Whatever. And these aren't damageable, so that you can't shoot them. You can only pick them up. Nice. Um, they, don't have a, they don't have a debug renderable yet, but we'll get there. Yeah, no, and we should add a little particle cool. emitter when you pick it up, like little sparkles or something. Oh, uh, we haven't we haven't visited the particle emitter in a while. That'd be really nice. <laughs> right. Cool. Okay. Uh, I love it. Awesome. It's five o'clock. It nice, is five o'clock. Nicely done. Is it pizza time? I don't know what to, what time it is. It's 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 call it's call my parents' time actually. Oh yeah, totally. Nice Sunday afternoon. Where are they again? East Coast. Uh, Louisiana. Oh my God! I I knew that you had family in Louisiana, but I, I'm just having I just have you confused with other people. <laughs> Doesn't that make you feel better? <laughs> yeah, to absolutely. Very very comforting. Yeah. Yeah. So Central Time, so like two hours ahead, it'll be. Yeah. Not yeah. not bad. I'm thinking about dinner myself. I had a really extravagant brunch, but it's been hours since brunch, so we'll see. It's, yeah. Oh man, yeah, it's time to be hungry after brunch again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna All right, dude. Food. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do it. Well, excellent excellent streaming. Uh, thanks, whoever showed up and asked, where are your viewers? It's a great question. Where are you right <laughs> I think now? they popped in and popped out. They're like, where, where are you? You were our viewer. It, um, where are you? Yeah. yeah. So it's lots of lots of open questions, lots of factoring and testing questions. We're really pushing at the the limits of our current ability to program right now, which is, which is good. We want to be yeah. around on that edge. It's, it's great for me. Yeah. Yeah, Excellent. I'm loving it. Cool. All right, Jeff, have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Yep. T Twitch, goodbye. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. All right.